Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode we're beginning with the Drez Scanner Pro and we're going to be sending it into Drez orbit but the question lingers whether Drez has any water after we discovered that Duna doesn't. And so yeah that's a major consideration and in fact if these bodies don't have water uh, which probably is more of a a configuration problem on my part than any problem with the mods. Uh, I think probably I'm using some old version of the mods or some mixed up thing. Remember, this series began in 0.24 and had to be upgraded to 0 0.90, so there might be something lingering that is incorrect about the whole setup. Uh, I, I can't believe that these mods wouldn't have water on Duna. So, yeah, uh, I. Well, we're hoping that there's at least water on Drez, otherwise our colonization plans are going horribly awry. Anyway, uh, we are past the maneuver node, it's uh, 53 minutes past, but it is a mid-course adjustment, so uh, we're, we're so far into our orbit, it's probably not going to make too big a difference. So I'm going to tell Smart ASS to point at that node, and we have plenty of Delta V to correct if necessary. Let us begin burning. So I've put together a 1.0.5 version of colonization, but it's impossible to import this save into it, too much has changed. But I'll, I'm, I'll probably be using it to practice with how coloniza the colonization mods, especially Rover Dude's USI, USI MKS, OKS colonization mods uh, work, because they've changed a bit, obviously. And I'm also going to have Planetary Base Inc. in there, and so I'll practice with that as well in stock. I haven't done that. And hopefully, I, I don't know if that'll end up being a sub-series, if you will. This will continue, but I will uh, I'll play around with that to get some practice in preparation for using it all in 1.1. So hopefully KSP 1.1 is not going to be too far away. And at that point, I will uh, restart everything. But it's worthwhile to get some practice in uh, using those mods now that they've been changed, so we'll have to see. Okay, let's take a look at what's happening at Drez now that I've made this move. Okay, well, definitely not as close as I want it to be. Let's see. Okay, yeah, that's getting better. We want to be in a scanning orbit. Either way around will be fine, probably. That'll do. Um, we actually might want it a little bit higher. Okay, yeah, looking good. We could adjust the inclination if necessary, but I think that's pretty polar. So, yes, we will have a scanning satellite in orbit around Drez. Let's get the alarm on for this one. So we can get rid of the old alarm, add new alarm. Okay, now the thing is, well, let's go to the half moon and then the Explorer X, but then we have to worry about our Kerbal in the gold bug. I'll try one more thing, which is getting rid of the module tug and really anything else that could be uh, causing problems, but I, I have very little hope. It seems like Rover Dude himself has been having trouble with KES doing this sort of thing, and um, yeah, uh, so he's actually created a new resource transfer thing people have been telling me in the comments that doesn't require KES uh, to get around it, but obviously I can't do that right now. Alright, so uh, half moo it is. So the half moon is simply entering Duna SOI here. So let's get us in and it's already got a periapsis that's reasonable. So all we need to do is burn into orbit and then we'll be all right. We don't really want to use much of the Delta V beyond this stage because that's the, that's the fuel that we're transferring to Duna orbit. Potentially to get these guys back if it turns out that the whole mining operation situation can't happen so they'll refuel with uh, the fuel here and then go back home now if the Explorer X the first order of business will be bringing those curls back to current surface so I need to send up a vehicle for them to return on but we'll try to get them into orbit around Kerbin first and then launch that vehicle I think okay Alright, let's see how much Delta V it's going to take to get into orbit. Uh, well, focusing view on Ike will be a first step. Oh, that's good enough anyway. Alright, so manual orbit. Um, this is not a good approach though, is it? We need to go around the same way everything else is going around. And how is everything else going around? 
Looks like they're all going around counterclockwise. That's fine. Prograde. So let's make an adjustment there. We don't seem to be turning. That's probably because the only electric charge is from a locked battery, right? I didn't put solar panels on this. Very convenient of me. Okay, so where is my locked battery? Okay, we have made a turn. Let me lock the battery again while we time warp to the maneuver node. We'll have to do a lot of energy conservation. I forgot about that, so I lost half of my electric charge. I probably had much more than this. Totally forgot that this thing had that problem. I better open the shield just in case later on it doesn't have um, electric charge. They can still dock with it and get the fuel. I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? To this target. Mm. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Let me just manually turn it around. Real silly. Okay, now it looks like a minimum on the relative inclination to what I've got currently got targeted. Not the greatest for everything involved, but uh, at least it's in line with one thing, and that's the CRT. Okay, so very good. That periapsis looks fine. Let's lock that battery again. Not that one, that's already locked. That's depleted. There we go, stop. Okay, then we'll unlock it once we get to periapsis and make orbit. I suppose the transfer stage will be flung back out into interplanetary space. I don't know if it's gonna get captured or not. Too bad this otherwise nifty engine doesn't produce electric charge. Okay, uh, separation. And there we go. So yeah, that's gonna end up back in solar orbit, Kerbal orbit, if you will. Which is good, we don't want to be cluttering up the orbits of Duna. It's pretty, pretty busy already. Not very busy. I seem busier. Okay, I think I'm gonna cut it here. Uh, to one and a half hour orbit. That leaves its apoapsis fairly high, which will make it easier for the other vehicles to rendezvous with it if necessary. And also it can change its inclination at the high apoapsis to meet them if, if, uh, well, if the nodes are proper. But anyway, uh, it'll save us some delta V here. And so we've delivered, well, almost an orange tank to Duna orbit, not quite. Let me lock this battery again. Okay, well, it's, uh, it's gonna be just sitting here waiting for somebody to use its fuel. All right, now on to the Explorer X, and I'm really hoping now, the Explorer X has been glitchy before, so I'm really worried that if I hop to it, it might just spontaneously explode a lot like my base, though the cause of the base ex uh, explosion is more to do with KES, apparently. I don't know what, uh, what might go wrong with the Explorer X. But it's been around for a while, and obviously we've already had a glitch with it uh, not meeting up with Kerbin the first time around, so let's see how it does. Okay, here we are. Loading, loading, loading. Pods are in Chadbro. And while obviously the cones are completely awry, um, well, its maneuverability seems fine. The, the, what you got? Uh, Infernal Robotics extendable parts are in completely the wrong place. The solar panels are all off. Um, miraculously, the central body is fine. It's just uh, some of the, the these these outer engine pods are bad. The engines are not even properly attached. It's because between uh, 0.24 and 0.90, I think, the attachment node system somewhat changed. As long as stuff was attached to like. Uh, well, I think also Infernal Robotics had uh, major changes. But yeah, uh, remember the gizmos were introduced in 0 .90, so... Well, anyway. Let's see about this. This has to get back home. Let's see about our current trajectory. Is that still the same? 
Yeah. Well, we've we've got an encounter with Kerbin. We've got 1,421 meters per second. Let's see. Let's focus view on Kerbin. Do we need to get closer to make orbit, or can we make a loose orbit out here? Probably would be better to get closer, obviously. But if we can do it up from out here, I'm not too bothered. Yeah, we could just use all of our fuel. We can make a minor correction once we get into uh, Kerbin SOI and then fix it up. Okay. Alright, guys. Podser and Chadbro, who have been out here. Well, it doesn't seem for very long, actually. But I don't think that's right. I'm not entirely sure that's correct, but it looks only like 349 days, according to that. Alright. Well, I mean, actually, they couldn't have been carrying too much supplies, so I suppose it might be correct. Alright, and th these are Earth time days, though, not Kerbin time days. Remember, uh, in this series, we've been using Earth time. 24 hours. So that, that, hence, 23 hours and 4 minutes there. Okay, on into Kerbin SOI. Okay, so let's see if we can bring it in a little bit closer to Kerbin. No, I think we've got that dealt with. Oh, uh, maybe we're not... I don't know. I can't uh, create a maneuver node right now, so maybe we're not really, really in. Okay, well, um, let me maneuver it. Uh, off. Smart ASS off. No, oh, that's excellent. I didn't think we could get it to within one degree. Well, it's not within one degree. To one degree. I'll take it. Come on. Obviously, this thing is difficult to turn. Has some reaction wheels, but still. It's big. Well, it's big and it's got that spinning thing. I don't know if the angular momentum of the spinning thing has any effect at all. I don't think so. Okay, that should be good. 210 kilometers, 1.1 degree inclination. And now, if we focus... Uh, no, no. It's the moon. No, I want to focus on Kerbin, but it's not going to let me, is it? Nope. What was it? Tab? We can go to each of the bodies. There we go. Okay. Well, that'll be our orbit. We, I don't want to use... I guess I might as well just use up all the fuel. We can still turn in everything. Um, so yeah, we'll use 1,400 or so. Somewhere around there. We'll have a apoapsis that's high. Periapsis around 210. Okay. Our life support situation for the gold bug needs to be mentioned. We've only got four days left. One crew member there. Okay, opening shield. So, I think it was Mikko who mentioned that I should recycle this thing. Once we get the Kerbals out, I don't know if it has control or not. We, if not, we'll have to add a little controller to it to bring it into wherever it needs to be brought into to be recycled. Um, we'll have to see. That sounds like a lot of stuff that we have to do. We'll leave it in orbit uh, pending that, though. Okay, here we go for orbit. Um, it will take a little bit of time. Okay. Oh, there's a little bit too much torque, so let me limit the throttle there. Okay, our orbit is tightening up. Our inclination is actually below one degree, uh, but it's going up. Maybe I can stop it from doing that. There we go. Get rid of that. We're just gonna use up the fuel. Oh, oh it's wiggling the other way. Back down. Okay, that's the end of those. Okay, and we definitely don't have any liquid fuel. 0.02 oxidizer somehow, don't ask me how that happens. Uh, so yeah, maybe when we transferred fuel to uh, probe or something, that's probably it. Okay, well, SAS, please. Oh, I, oh because it's smart ASS. SAS, 
There we go. Okay, uh, we'll have it uh, point point north. Makes sense. So now we just have to send something up to grab the two Kerbals back. Sounds like a plan. And I think I'll conclude the episode with that. It'll be a short episode, but that'll mean that I can do all, all the messy stuff trying to get the gold bug safe uh, away from the camera, if you will. Because that's bound to take a long time, and I would rather not be trying to commentate through all of that. So I'll try that between this episode and ne the next episode, and then I'll report my findings in the next episode, and we may have one less Kerbal in the space program at that point. But first, let's get these guys back down. That should take much less than three days. Okay, so trying to send up the CRT to retrieve the Kerbals on the full Strider SL would be overkill. You know, the Strider SL has the skipper second stage, and in that case, the Strider SL can get this all the way to orbit and then it has 4,000 meters per second left over to get to, for instance, Drez, which is what uh, we did with the CRT currently around Drez. So instead of having the skipper stage on, I decided to just have the booster stage and then go straight to the CRT's own stage to uh, continue to orbit. And it definitely has enough TWR for that. I've added little 50% uh, scaled using tweet scale monopropellant tanks, so that's convenient. I've added these RCS ports. Um, they do seem to have a higher uh, temperature tolerance, 1250 compared to 900, and so I'm hoping that'll be for the best, but uh, who knows. That's, uh, that's uh, one wild card there. Obviously the other wild card, we don't have any heat shield, uh, so deadly reentry is gonna have a field day, but we can slow down manually though, that's always a dodgy business. We could do a, well, there's a lot of trajectory questions, but uh, yeah, we'll save that for a little bit. Let's get to the Kerbals first. I think we have enough juice all together, definitely, and certainly we could slow down on the way down if that was advisable. We have parachutes. We have, uh, we have a set of four parachutes there. No drogue chutes, but this isn't uh, 1.0 yet. Uh, the, this stage has drogue chutes. This stage doesn't. But again, we could use the engines to slow down if we needed to slow down to release the parachutes. Okay, and life support is 26 days, which is way more than we need. And there is a remote controller, so we are not going to be sending any Kerbals in this at first. Because, well, this is a novel way to launch it, and I don't want to risk anybody. Okay, so that is the idea. It's got a high thrust to weight ratio initially, and it does peak out a little bit higher than 4 uh, TWR there, 4 G's. Okay, so I'm actually going to restart first since I haven't restarted during this recording and then I'll launch this. Okay, here we go. This is unfortunately a nighttime launch, but I don't want to waste any time. So we've got SAS on, throttle is up. The rocket looks awkward, but it's cheap. Uh, we're going to recover the booster hopefully. It, it will be going pretty fast, so maybe Maybe uh, stage recovery will decide that it's uh, gonna burn up or something based on deadly reentry, and then of course the capsule itself is going to be recoverable. So we have skipped out on the skipper non-recoverable stage, and that'll be for the best. Okay, throttle is up, and okay, we are all configured. Let's launch. No Kerbals on board, of course. The Explorer X is a bit behind, it's right there. So it should be good for our, our ability to catch up with it. Okay, our apoapsis is getting pretty high just on this stage. Didn't rotate very quickly, I probably should have. But again, we're uh, aiming for the Explorer X at 210 kilometers, so it's not too bad. Okay, here we're just on the SRV. Okay, separation. And ignition. 
Okay, I'm gonna turn that off for a bit. As we get to about 160 kilometers apoapsis, and let's see what's really that's quite a quite a leap there. Let's see about our rendezvous. We don't have to rush this. We can probably hit at that ascending node right there. It looks like the target is going to slowly. There's target position and then our intersect, we're, we're in front. So we have to go a little bit slower. Well, that's five kilometers right there. That's a good start. And if we add another maneuver there, to sort of match speeds with the target and get closer. Let's just go with the five kilometer thing. So, all right. We're going to hit there five kilometers, and we've got plenty of juice to do it. Okay, double joint reinforcement, and there we go. Okay, well, we are on RCS. We're probably carrying too much of it. I don't have solar panels out, but I think our electric charge will hold out. I think I can get this stocking done within 10 hours, so no problems there. We do have solar panels. Got lots of them, in fact. Okay, okay, hold on there. Let's take the long view here. Yeah, alright. Now, we do have connected living space, so I might not be able to transfer them within this whole thing. Might have to EVA them to get them to there. Okay, bounce and connection. Well, let's see. Um, they are in the command module here. Okay, uh, transfer. Up there. Unable to reach. Yeah, so we're going to have to EVA them. Alright, pause their EVA. Okay, grab. Slide on down. And... Oh, it's F for board again. Oh, yes. It's not B for board, not in this version. Oh, what's happened? Okay, there we go. Okay, Podser's in. Chad bro. Why am I not getting the sound? That's weird. I didn't get the EVAing sound. Okay, grab. Slide down. And F to board. Okay, well, let us proceed. Undock. Wrong side. And let's get them back home. Actually, yeah, that was also the open hatch thing. That might also have also been causing me to not be able to send them through. I don't know which was actually blocking the way, whether there was just a lack of connection between the parts through connected living space or whether it was the non-open hatch thing. Okay, well, where are we? Uh, KSC is still in the dark and we're over here close to apoapsis anyway. I'd rather, uh, well we could drop our periapsis a little bit from apoapsis but then we'll go to periapsis and tighten our orbit there as well prior to re-entry. I want to get to my sort of normal 100 kilometer orbit. So orbit retrograde. Okay, very good. Now on to the other side. We should be hopefully not crashing into the station, right? Yeah, we're leaving the station behind, and uh, not station. It doesn't use the station icon, but it's Explorer X. We are leaving it behind. Very good. We'll aim for a splashdown on the off the eastern coast of the KSC, and then maybe we'll be able to use our engines to actually hit the KSC. We'll see. At least we're not at a severe inclination or anything. And we're not returning from something like the moon. And we've got oodles and oodles of Delta V. Which we should probably burn off to save the parachutes some trouble. 
Okay, uh, 103 by 88 is all right. Not great, but all right. Okay, let's go to the opposite side from the from the eastern peninsula. And then do the main retro burn. So again, no heat shield to work with. So that's a major downside to the cal uh, the Tal command pod. Um, could have slapped an extra heat shield, of course, but we've tested this system before, and once again, I hope that we will be safe using it. Gonna take it to 35 kilometers, so it should be a gentle pass through the atmosphere. Up, 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 went too far, but that'll allow me to use RCS, which we might as well burn off too, because we don't use it for anything else. Uh, yeah, 35 kilometers, which should be gentle, and then uh, after it slows us down a little bit, we can use the engines to do the rest. Got all sorts of stuff floating around. Uh, Duna resupply two debris floating there. We don't get to know what that little piece is. It's a busy place altogether. Let's take in the solar panels. Okay, we are now in the atmosphere. I'll orient properly. We'll have Smart ASS hold the retrograde. We are currently over here, so got a long ways to go till we reach the KSC. I'm hoping that we don't fall short, that would be bad. But I've tried to keep the periapsis pretty high to avoid that. Okay, 55 kilometers, no obvious problems. Still going at 3x time warp, I'm wondering if I should take that off. And, uh, well, we, we seem to be going further, so we, we'll be overshooting the KSC unless we use our engines, so that's as planned. Still a little piece of debris there. Mid-range resupply Strider SL debris. <laughs> How can it be lower than me like that? That must be, uh, hopefully that's re-entering or something, because there's no way it should be still orbiting. Oh, did we get the booster back? Yeah, we got the booster back. 16,000. Oh, well, there, there's a piece of that mission that uh, got destroyed. Uh, looks like the skipper stage, as planned. The booster from that mission got recovered, though. So, that's all good. Apparently there's still one piece that has not been recovered. I mean, hasn't been destroyed. Still going around. We appear to be a little bit south of the... Well, I mean, we're, we're almost in line with the KSC. Maybe a little bit on the southern side. Actually, it is a pretty good trajectory as it is. It's still aiming... Oh, oh, oh! We have sound. Oh, I don't know what exploded, but I'm using some throttle a little bit. Okay, what 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 was that? Oh, the landing struts. Well, that's inconvenient, but not critical. Not critical. They gotta flop a bit on landing without landing struts. Okay, well we have sound, it's just that uh, apparently the actual flame effects aren't producing too much of it. Could use Mechjeb's guidance, but... Can we... can we tilt a little bit north yet? Well, definitely not going badly. 20 kilometers altitude. Got RCS to help us tilt a little bit here. I'm gonna just go SAS on this. Don't actually want to land on the corner of one of the buildings, you know, on the top and might be dangerous and all. Try and land it close to the astronaut complex so that our 
crew guys can have a short walk back to their uh, their homes, I suppose. All right, definitely time for parachutes. Not the SPH, please. Please, not on top of the SPH. That's a curved ceiling. Oh, we heard a little decoupling from the launch clamps. Well, that's the astronaut complex right there. It shouldn't be too far away. Oh, well, what's, what's this tower here? Ooh. Bit close. Don't get tangled on that thing. Okay, 6.8 meters per second. Closer to the SPH than the astronaut complex, but not bad. Still 1,700. Um, here. I, I want to go away from this thing. mysterious round thing. Let me reset SAS so that I can use the remaining mop propellant to keep us stable. Gonna slow us down. I hope this it is ah oh, it's an edge. It's one of those Oh okay no we're on the we're on the pavement. Okay, Chadbro and Podzer, welcome back. Okay, well, the game crashed when I tried to recover, so uh, let us recover it here. There we go. Come on. Come on, you can do it. There we go. No extra science, unfortunately. Uh, we got back the funds from the pods. And let's see, 16 experience gained by Podzer and Chadbro. Let's see, are they the most experienced people we've got? Let me just check. So, uh, yeah, Chadbro and Podzer are level 2. Got some level 1s here, and among the assigned peoples, I'm sure if we brought some of these guys back, they'd be very experienced, but, uh, yeah, they are our most experienced Kerbals, and it looks like just one more experience point till they go to level 3, so very good. We got a good pilot and an engineer uh, the, uh that mission. Still, our only lost Kerbal is Jebediah, and the Kerbal that we are worried about now is Danmi Kerman in the Gold Bug. Though certainly the other Kerbals who are in the at the moon station, the Kerbatat here, uh, Mike, Desric, I think it's just Mike and Desric. So Mike, Desric, and Danmi are the guys that I'm worried about. All right. So on that note, and success for this episode. I'll say. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.